Intergenerational diversity is the big one that I'm seeing come through that teams are really struggling with. I have to say, I've been having a lot of conversations lately with different organizations in different industries. And, you know, so you start to see trends come through with what's happening in workplaces. And one of the big ones that I'm seeing at the moment is conflict in teams. Um, Ooh, that's because a of, yeah, but yeah. You, there's a particular element of it that's standing out and it's conflict in teams between generations. So there's been a lot of talk about diversity, you know, racial diversity, gender diversity, but that intergenerational diversity is the big one that I'm seeing come through that teams are really struggling with. And it seems to be around two topics. One is different approaches to work in general. Mm -hmm. And then the other is different approaches to well-being and work-life balance and, how, and mental health and how that all fits into the workplace. So what's the biggest complaint that you get yeah. managers? Yeah. I've not had my complaint is not the right word. What's the biggest concern that managers yeah. have when it comes to intergenerational diversity? Well, managers just want everyone to get along. Right. <laughs> because conflict obviously disrupts performance. It takes away from the actual job that you're there to do. But what it's kind not of pleasant. What are we talking about? Well, here's the thing that you see this divide. So this is how it's been explained to me is this You know, in our team, there's a divide between the ones right. that have been around for a while and the young ones coming through, and that their approaches are different. So the younger people tend to be more conscious of mental health, of well-being, of their entitlements in the workplace, um, how they fit, how work fits in with their life in general. Make you know, that, so they've got that kind of lens on on work. The flip side of that, I'm hearing, is that. A lot of managers have said, quite frankly, they're just not as resilient. Uh, and okay. so that's where they are contacting us. Can we build the resilience of our team? Because one little incident happens and they fall apart and don't know what to do with it. And so how do we bolster them and strengthen them and make them stronger? The problem is that then you've got the older generation that tend to have that old school approach. It's like, don't know what you're complaining about, toughen up, get over it, there's a job to be done, like what's what's your problem here? Right. And you do what needs to be done to get the job done, none of this like. Mm. And the problem there obviously is that it can come across as lacking the empathy for other people who might be struggling with things. So hence the mm. conflict emerges within the teams. So I mean, a couple of things that I've, that I've heard is, you know, a person going through a performance appraisal getting upset and the parents calling into yes. the HR department to see how they can help. Yeah. We haven't seen that before. No. <laughs> <laughs> really comes to I've the never heard of it before no, <laughs> in the workplace. No. And this is not an isolated event mm. or a person getting fired and the dad calling in to say, what can I do so you can rehire them again? Yeah. Um, so that level of parental interference mm. we have never seen, which mm. would explain the lack of resilience. Well, in younger people, I mean, lack of resilience doesn't happen automatically because we're very resilient people mm. naturally. Yeah. So in order to learn that kind of res helplessness, yeah, it, it is learned. Um, there has to be a programming period, mm. and and we're seeing a lot of helicopter parenting. Yeah. Um, it, lately, so it, it starts way before that. Is what way you're saying. Way before that. Mm even when they're little. And obviously yeah. this isn't all young people. There's, there's oh, a no. just general kind no, no. of But it's so tight, societal. But I've heard it enough times from mm. the people, you know, from HR managers mm. in different organizations that it's definitely a trend yeah. that's happening out there. And, and the other one, the other one that I've seen a couple of videos of, which may, may be a little bit exaggerated, mm. but a young person complaining um, that how hard it is because they're expected to go to work from nine to five for a whole eight hours uh, and <laughs> that's their job and they're complaining about that like a normal yeah. Yeah. work yeah. situation so I think there's something to be said about the younger generations lacking resilience but I'm going to take ownership of that as the older generation and mm. say that we have trained them to be to mm. lack resilience mm. and now we have to retrain people To be, to be Is it too late once they get into the workplace though? Because as a parent, I'm saying, well, that's great. I can work on that with my child now so that they can, you know, be successful and happy and resilient in their future careers and life in general. 
But as a manager, if I've already got these, you know, twenty somethings coming in yeah. in this space, it's that retraining it's is. It's hard, but I mean, we we have seen from our resilient courses. We've mm. got two resilient courses: the resilient at work, which is for general, yeah. and then we've got building resilient teams for managers. Yeah. And we have seen people's resilience go through the That's roof true. Yeah. in the training itself. Yeah. So resilience, it's, you know, helplessness is learned. Yeah. So if helplessness is learned, if we undo the learning of the helplessness, that turns into resilient. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not that hard if the person wants to, yes. wants to do it. Because if the person gets a kick out of having mum and dad protecting me in helicopter parenting, because that's what I'm used to, and I, and I get a kick out of it, well, they may never get They'll continue the resilience to until mom and dad disappears, unfortunately. Or, or they can, yeah. or they want to expect that from their manager or from mm. their colleagues and things like and that. And it is not a new thing. I mean, I remember through, through the years hearing stories, uh, you know, of uh, this is usually a, a young lady that is so sick, so sick, she can't move out of bed. And the poor mom, elderly mother, elderly father, dad dies, mother keeps on bringing her food, taking mm -hmm. care, cleaning her, doing the toiletries for her, the whole lot. And then mum dies. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens? She gets out of bed and gets on with living. Yeah. So I think as, as a natural progression of human mm. beings, we don't want to be not resilient. Mm. It's not natural for us. We don't want to be mm. a, in that state of learned helplessness. So eventually we reach a stage in which we we have to grow up. Yeah. But we'll we'll take it. If you go on holidays and you have mm. people to come and, you know, look after you, you'll accept it, of course. Um, of course yeah. you know, so while it's there, people are gonna keep taking it. Mm. What are the strengths that you think a, a younger generation brings to workforces though? Because I mean it's not all bad, obviously. Um, uh, look, I don't like to talk about young people mm. in the one pocket. I have met young people that have got a maturity, yeah, um, of course, yeah. more mature than some 60, 70 year old people. That's true. It's, it's not about the age, it's about the mindset. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but the ones that we're talking about that, that re lack resilience, um, they, they need to go through hardships, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what can workplaces do? I think sometimes the problem with workplaces is that they make it too easy. Yeah. Too easy to be unwell, too easy to take a day off, too easy to, to complain. You don't I don't want you don't want to encourage your people to be complaining mm -hmm. and criticizing everything you do, because they will. Mm -hmm. And they'll make a sport out of it. <laughs> But if you redirect the thinking yeah. and the narrative, mm -hmm. you the discourse in your organization mm -hmm. to one of resilience, of can do, um, some people call it enablist, which I don't have an issue with. I prefer people to be enablist than disablist. <laughs> disablist is about illness, enablist mm -hmm. is about health. I mean, we don't want to take extremes, of yeah. course. But you know, if we change the narrative of the, of the workplace, and this is where managers need to be very aware of what, what comes out of their mouth. Because gonna... I've seen a lot of managers making things worse with their words. Yeah. Uh, if we turn that around, if we become aware, I think things will very quickly improve. But and can... the people that don't want to be resilient, they will leave. Yeah. So it's a win-win. But it can be done gently too. It doesn't yeah, have to be like, this is how no, it is, toe the line this way or the highway. It can and be lovingly. lovingly, compassionately, like this yeah. is where we're going, people. And that certainty that a manager brings to be able to but do that diplomatically to say, is important. But if we're not used to mm. somebody telling us how things are, mm. doesn't matter how loving, how gentle, how compassionate, how well-worded, with the proper tone it is, it won't make a difference to that person. The person will still get hurt. Yeah. By the way, if a person gets hurt from hearing truth delivered in a nice way, then it's not that you did something yeah. wrong yeah. and it's not that their mental health is suffering. Mm. Suffering and getting a chucking a tantrum or chucking a tanty, like we say in Australia, chucking a tanty is not a problem. Mm. It's part of growing up. Mm. We've all done it when we don't like something. So, it, you know, don't, let's not confuse mental health with I'm um, feeling 
annoyed at you saying something to me. So yeah. that's, that's two different That's aspects, very, very right? true. But let me go back to the question. <laughs> what strengths do the younger generation bring to workforces? Innovation, I think, I think creativity, all, yeah, different... All, all, all generations bring something. Their, their understanding and their, uh, their engagement with technology Oh wow! Yeah, it's yeah. lights of years ahead. Yeah, and Lucas is doing some thing, some wallpaper things with his phone that I don't know how to do. <laughs> and he's ten. Yeah, you know. um, they they bring also a way of looking at the world in which they're looking at shortcuts. You know, <laughs> which isn't always a bad thing. No, it's not always a it bad thing. It can be a more efficient way of doing things. <laughs> That's right, and they're more likely to complain about things if they don't understand why. Mm. which may be annoying as a manager to have yeah. to be thinking of the why and explaining, but it could be a plus yeah. for the organization to say, okay, well, we're going to put this in place. What's the reason that we need to give to people so we bring them on board? Because yeah. sometimes, sometimes we forget to pe pe bring people That's on true. board. So it's not all bad. Yeah. yeah. But I'd be interested to know also, what do people think about, what do pe young people bring to, the, to society or to workplaces that older people don't? don't have mm -hmm. that would be a good question mm -hmm. I also want to know if you think younger people are less resilient now than they used to be are, are we right have you heard of the term helicopter parenting mm -hmm. um, what do you think about helicopter parenting is that giving us more gifts or more problems in our society yeah. so that's kind of an interesting conversation to have Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week, so when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.